Hey YouTube, this is going to be part 3 of the color pencil series I'm doing to explore the color zones of the face. And we're going to be taking a similar approach to the last video, but we're going to be using an orange and red hair color and see how those colors interact with each other when they're surrounded by that warm tone. So I'm starting out my initial sketch with my yellow color and then I'll tone the entire area of the face. Now if you're new to drawing or need some help with your portraiture work, I suggest you check out the Loomis Method video that I have. It gives you a brief overview on some head construction. I'm taking a modified approach here where I'm starting with the general shape of the head and then building out the features inside that shape. But the Loomis Method is a great thing to learn as it helps you kind of get your features correctly placed, but also helps you a lot with proportion and keeping things consistent. Now to help things be a little bit more visible on screen, I'm going to take the green and focus on some of the shadow areas and then use the orange on the warmer areas. Now I do an entire video diving into the specifics of the color zones, but the real short version of it is areas in shadow are going to be a little bit more blue, areas with more fat or bone is going to be yellow, and areas with a lot of blood are going to be red or just more warm. Now while color zones of the face are pretty consistent, um, color in and of itself is this really complex subject matter when it comes from an arts perspective because there are so many different aspects to it. There's chroma, there's value, there's saturation, but colors also interact with whatever they're next to. Um, so Albers has this book called The Interaction of Color and I'll leave a link in the description, but it's this really crazy detailed book about how color kind of lies to you as strange as that sound um it changes value it changes tone it changes temperature and it's all these subtle interactions because the way that the human eye sees color is that it sees color as kind of a all at once phenomenon so even though you could be looking at something red if that red thing is next to a blue thing it's going to seem more red than it actually is and it's these like crazy interactions that makes color so fun but ultimately incredibly intimidating so with this portrait i wanted to see what the color zones of the face would look like if i surrounded them with warm tones so this portrait has reddish orange hair now at this stage you can see that those oranges in the face are pretty saturated um, they look a little bit too dark, a little bit too overwhelming at this point, but once I start to add in all that orange in the hair, the face looks a lot less orange. It becomes a lot more subtle because I'm giving your eyes something that's more orange to look at. So by comparison, the orange on the face becomes a lot more subtle. So to keep that warmth in that color zone, I have to incorporate the future more into those features. One other really subtle but interesting color interaction that's happening with this series is because I'm starting with a yellow color pencil, I'm neutralizing some of the blue of the pad. So because I'm toning the entire area of the portrait with that yellow, it's going to knock back that blue a little bit more and help my portrait pop off the page a bit more and look separate from the paper background. Toning a surface is a pretty standard painting technique that translates into all their mediums. I think the most famous example of this is Maxfield Parrish. He used to tone his canvases blue and build his values and colors up from that. And it gave his work a lot of realism because all shadow in pretty much every setting is going to have a slightly bluer tone because we live on a planet with a yellow sun. And it's one of those subtle interactions of color that gives such realism to a piece. Here I'm using that same principle by using blue tones in my shadow areas. So because I'm giving it a bit more blue in hue, it's going to read more realistic because that's what naturally happens in the world, even though this is incredibly stylized. Now at this point in the portrait, we're getting closer to the values that we had in our last one. So it's still predominantly blue in the face with those greens, and there's a lot more cool tones. But what I'm going to do is as I fill in that hair and build those values, all those blues are going to look a little bit more subtle because the orange is going to overwhelm them. Choosing to do the eyes in a blue color is also going to help them stand out a little bit more. 
So as I build up those warm tones in the hair, I'm gonna really focus on the shadow shapes first and build up that value and then go in and layer more color on top. This will allow me to ensure that my shadows are going to have the highest level of saturation and color diversity, but it's also going to ensure that my highlights are still there. For my darkest details, I'm gonna use this kind of purpley indigo color and this will help just to darken things up because I don't want to use a black as it would kind of ruin the color variance of the piece. Once I start bringing that burgundy though, that's really when the hair starts to solidify and things start to balance a bit more. When working in color pencil or really any medium, it's always kind of a give and take. If you darken one area, you might have to darken another just so that your value structure stays pretty consistent. Now, once I'm happy with the structure of the hair, I'm gonna go in and glaze over it with a little bit of that orange and some yellow. This will help to really neutralize the teal of the paper, but also make the colors look a bit more harmonious. It's just a nice subtle trick to make sure that everything looks a little bit more realistic, but also make your colors a little bit more blended without trying to get those really smooth, unnecessary gradients. Part of the fun with color pencil, and especially on this ugly book paper, is that texture that we achieve. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and enjoyed watching this kind of portrait process. If you found this educational, enjoyable, throw me a like so I know. It kind of helps me decide what kind of content to make for my YouTube channel. And if you want to see more of my process or hear me kind of ramble about art history and material techniques, uh, you're welcome to subscribe. Thanks, bye.